Welcome to this month's episode of Short Clip Case Studies, brought to you by Natera Performance Solutions. Hi everyone, today I'll be touching on a case study of how I included isometric strength training for a youth track cyclist. This is the profile of the athlete. He started off training as a road cyclist, but was converted to a track sprinting discipline in late 2017 when it was discovered that he could produce relatively high peak power. I started working with him around June 2018. By then, he already had about one year resistance training experience. The coach's objective was for me to get the athlete to hit a peak power of 2,200 watt for the six second sprint. As we do not have a velodrome in Singapore, the athlete spent most of his time on the watt bike. Block periodization method was used to plan his strength training uh, with each block lasting between four to eight weeks. I started him off with a four week block of higher volume general strength phase to make sure that all lifting techniques were sound. Loading wise, I used one repetition in reserve for first session and three repetition in reserve for the second session. The four week block was followed by an eight week block of intensified training. The number of sessions was increased to three per week. Loading wise, I used one repetition in reserve for the first session and three repetition in reserve for the second session. And for the third session, uh, two repetition in reserve. Performance was improved by about 10% for both cycling and strength after uh, the first 12 weeks block. Uh, about a week after the strength test, he flew off to the host country of the Asian Cycling Confederation track cup so that he could get a couple of weeks practice on the velodrome before the competition. He managed to obtain a gold medal in the 200 meter sprint and silver medal in the Kirin Junior event. We resume the eight week strength block a week after he returned from the competition. Um, for the first four weeks, everything were um, dynamic and um, majority of the program remained the same, including the loading strategy. The only difference was the inclusion of isometric work in session two and three um, from weeks five to eight. In session two, half the number of sets of um, track bar deadlift were replaced with isometric version. What he had to do was perform isometric contraction at the bottom range of the deadlift with maximum intensity and rate of force development. Okay, ready? Go. In session three, the back squat with chain was performed as a contrast set with isometric squat at the bottom position. The rationale for this was to induce some form of potentiation at the position where concentric force production is initiated. In addition, while the back squat with chain works on force production at the, at the end range of concentric action, the isometric squat is used to work on the initial phase of the concentric action. Following the eight week strength block was a four week power block. Isometric work was included in session one as isometric mid thigh pull uh, to contrast with block power shrug. In session two, I had him perform the step up with only the forefoot in contact with the platform so as to allow the calf muscles to be in a somewhat isometric state throughout the range of movement. The purpose was to increase the stiffness of the calf and Achilles tendon, as these have um, high implications to force transfer to the pedal when cycling.
The isometric exercise in session three was also performed as a contrast set with ballistic exercise. So what the athlete did was perform the isometric track bar split squat at the bottom range of the movement, followed by concentric split squat jump. We actually saw a much greater improvement in all the test performance after this 12 week block. Um, honestly, I'm not too sure if this is, uh, if this enhanced performance was attributed to the inclusion of isometric training, or it would have been the case even if isometric training wasn't included. Uh, we were just glad that it somehow produced a favorable outcome. I subsequently got him to perform an eight week hypertrophy block. Um, the program was similar to the very first four week block I presented earlier um, without any isometric training. This was then followed by four week max strength and four week power block, which was similar to the programs with the isometric training. And that was how the athlete managed to get to the targeted 2200 watt peak power for the six second sprint. Um, I'm not too sure if this is considered a, a fast progression or is it just average um, as the, this athlete is the first um, track cyclist I ever uh, took. Here's some visual for the change in test performance. The athlete competed in the Malaysian National Championship sometime in August 2019. There was some improvement to the race time, although not as great a change as the lab test performance. This was very likely due to the lack of specific training on the velodrome to work on his uh, cycling technique. So we managed to um, improve his physical attribute, but um, what we lacked was specific training on the velodrome. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a velodrome in Singapore, so uh, this was our limitation. So why include isometric training? Um, firstly, isometric training has been shown to enhance joint angle specific force production um, better than other mode of um, resistance training. So it's a good way to help improve force production at the most biomechanically disadvantaged position or um, sticking region or even the uh, joint position where concentric force is initiated. Secondly, um, isometric training um, has been shown to enhance tendon stiffness better than other resistance training mode as well. Um, and this, has, uh, this is beneficial to uh, rate of force development. And thirdly, um, my PhD, uh, during my PhD study, I've compared um, the use of the, the inclusion of isometric training uh, versus um, traditional strength training. And what we, sh we found was that the inclusion of isometric training um, actually increased strength more than just uh, performing uh, traditional strength training alone. Um, the first point is likely one of the reason because um, we got the athletes to perform isometric training at the sticking region of the um, exercises. Um, second reason why isometric inclusion of isometric training might work is because uh, athletes adaptation might plateau after a period of um, training with the same mode of uh, resistance training. Um, so the inclusion of isometric training might break the monotony and help to uh, uh, overcome the plateau in adaptation. Um, finally, recent studies have also showed that the inclusion of isometric training can benefit um, cycling performance. For example, Cordy et al. Uh, implemented cycling-specific isometric training and um, 
that actually improved the uh, peak power of elite cyclists. Thank you for um, watching.